uh, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his exhibition. Uh, please. Okay. Um, uh, I'll make a very short um, discussion. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you very much that it was possible to expose these photographs here. You were very helpful, it was great, very dynamic, with everything very competent. And I think uh, you are also an artist, a photograph in the rainbow holograms here, are very nice, and you are also a manager in holographic art. And so I think personally you are the most important, one of the most important person for holography, combining your art and managing, which is very important. So uh, I'm very happy that, that the exposition is here in New York, because uh, Germany and uh, very long tradition of friendship and cooperation in spite of all political problems. Yes? And uh, uh, in this context, I also want to thank uh, Tate. He is from the College of New Jersey. And he came uh, several years ago, he came to Germany with some students and he brought a laser with him. And uh, the laser was better than the one I had. And so we made some monograms with the students, and then when he went back, he said, I leave the laser as a loan here. And so it's still a loan, and some of the holograms, maybe 50%, are made with the American laser sense. Um, I'm a physicist, I'm working in a holographic laboratory, and uh, so I give some information about the title. I called it coherence and incoherence. Uh, it has something to do with the holographic technique which I use. Um, the, uh, the word is full of uh, incoherent light. Everything you see is incoherent light. It's a coherent light wave. Uh, it's, it's a lot of colors. It's uh, polychromatic. And if you see normal colors, if you look around the world, the light illuminates the objects It's the color which you see in the light waves is made by absorption and scattering of the pigments of the, of, the, of the molecules of the surface of the object. In contrast to that, we have a, a, the laser. He makes coherent light. And this light is a perfect light wave. It's monochromatic. And there we have a lot of interference effects. And these interference effects are the basis of phonography. We have some interference structure in the hologram. And if you illuminate the hologram, we get a different kind of color. That's are interference colors that are spectral pure colors. And so we have colors from incoherent light and colors from coherent light. Both are different. The coherent colors are a little bit dynamic. If you move your head, the colors changes, especially in rainbow holograms. And what I that is a uh, and what I did, I combined the colors, the normal colors, uh, with uh, photographic colors. So my monograms are a collage. Collage is a technique, a mixture of two, uh, two, um, two different uh, methods. Uh, I combined a hologram, uh, I combined it with a graphic design. Yeah. So uh, I make the holograms, then I make a graphic design and put them one over the other. Yeah. What is the advantage? The advantage is that you get much more colors. Yeah. You get the, if you have this structure and you illuminate it with diffuse light, you see the uh, graphic design. You see a painting or something like that, which has a lot of colors. So you never see a dark hologram, which I think is important. You see always colors if you illuminate it. If you go around, you see colors. If you illuminate the hologram with directed light, you see the hologram, but in the background, you see the graphic design. And so you mix the interference colors with the normal colors. And there is a strong interaction between the colors, because if you have a colored hologram, and the background has a different colors. You have a addition of colors, like in a television. Yes, two colors mixed. And you see the hologram in a different color. If you have a red hologram and you have a blue background, you see some hologram which has um, 
color which is a little bit yellow. Yeah. The price I pay uh, that the contrast is going down because the 3D structure is not in the additional color. So the contrast is lower, but you see more colors. You see colors which the hologram cannot produce because it's uh, spectral pure colors. Yeah? And uh, so that's uh, the idea of this uh, method which I use. Uh, I, I'm not so much interested in making 3D photos. I'm interested to, to have colors and structures in the holography, yes, and mixing both both methods. Another item I want to mention, I make the holographic film material myself. Uh, it's an achromatic uh, film material, and I have a very simple coating technique, and uh, the result is that uh, the film is very imperfect. It's not a perfect film. The surface structure is a little bit rough, it's irregular, the depth, the thickness is different, irregular, and if you make a hologram with this imperfect uh, film material, you see some unexpected color changes within the hologram, which are for me very interesting because you have a certain control over the material, but you have also some surprise if you see the hologram uh, in, if you look in detail. So you have some unexpected, uncontrolled result always. And uh, I think that is interesting for me. It's all the life. If you have some unexpected event, it is a surprise. And sometimes these unexpected events are very interesting. Yes. So uh, that's it. So I never know exactly what is coming out in detail. Uh, another thing is the uh, the film material changes, aging. The film material is different after one, two, three, four, five. Days. So I can control a little bit the hologram if I use the material fresh or after some days. Yeah. Um, so for me, the production of the film uh, is part of the artistic process because the production process influences the colors of the hologram. So that's that's uh, what uh, is. Uh, my, my aim, my idea to produce holograms uh, with uh, a collage and with self-made, homemade uh, film material and unexpected colors. That's it, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. with a drink and some snacks afterwards. Um, right now, uh, Schmude, Kim, would you like to just introduce your installation next door? Uh, Dave Schmude, this is Kim Burgess. We have worked together on this piece called Borgos. And it's a video projection installation uh, where we shot dancers in a pool of liquid, and that's what you see them emanating from this like layered material in the corners. And uh, it's completely silent until people enter it. And depending on how many people are in there and the proximity to one another, uh, the soundscapes change. Sort of how we navigate one another uh, in daily life. I'm not sure if you have something to add to that. No, that's awesome. Yeah, that's the piece. Okay, so I invite you to go on and experience that piece. And then Jiong Lee is being a bit shy. Um, we might try and pin him down in the main gallery. Otherwise, through the library, there's some snacks and some drinks. So uh, you're all welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.